Well, a local man, one of the first in the area to get a new device to shock the heart. Yeah, medical reporter Liz Bonus sat down to talk with him. She joins us now with more on how it works, Liz. Good afternoon once again. Doctors at the Mercy Health Heart Institute are one of the first in the area to offer patients a newer type of implantable defibrillator. It lowers the risk of sudden death. Now, unlike the traditional kind, this one doesn't actually get wired directly into the heart. It is designed for younger patients because it is long lasting and for those with really fragile health, like the patient we met who says it really did save his life. By the time Bill Amon was referred to Dr. James Muth, he had some pretty complex health problems. I'm a diabetic. Uh, recently, very recently, last month, I started dialysis. Dr. Muth, however, was concerned about Bill's heart, more importantly, its irregular heart rhythm. So after careful discussion, Bill became one of Dr. Muth's first patients to have this newer type of defibrillator put into his body. It's a sub-Q uh, defibrillator that we place into these patients that keeps everything out of their vascular system and is just in, uh, placed underneath the skin. As this animation, courtesy of Boston Scientific, shows, the subcutaneous defibrillator is placed under the skin on the side of the chest wall between the fifth and sixth ribs. An electrode is then run under the skin instead of in a vein, placing it in front of the chest wall. If it detects a heart rhythm problem, it will trigger the defibrillator to generate an electrical pulse to restart the heart. In Bill's case, one night shortly after it was inserted, he sat down to dinner with his wife, Jean, and... When she brung mine, she went back to get hers, and I passed out. The new defibrillator did its job. When he woke up, a computer printout showed doctors exactly what had happened. They had it right down to the wow. second. When it happened, how long it was off, how my quit, my heart quit, uh, it was 18 seconds. If the patient goes into an abnormal rhythm, like Mr. Amon uh, experienced, which is an episode of sudden cardiac death, the defibrillator will appropriately detect that and then deliver a high energy shock and shock the heart back into a normal rhythm. He points out that while this certainly was the right device for this patient, it does have limitations and is not for everyone. It does, however, move us one step closer to what medicine is now all about, customized care and individualized needs for each person. We have currently pacemakers that do not have any wires, and those pacemakers are little capsules that screw into the heart muscle. And the anticipation is, is in the next few years that those will be, have that ability to deliver that fast pacing without shocking the patient and be hooked up with this device. Now, it is important to note this one is not a pacemaker, the one they just put in here, so it can't be used if you just need that regular rhythm restored. Mm -hmm. But in a case where they're just occasionally worried it's going to go off like they did with him, mm -hmm. they can put this in. And the reason it's designed for those younger is it has uh, the ability to withstand a lot of beats. The batteries last a long time, so you could put this one in and technically leave it there a long time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of younger people do have rhythm problems yeah. that you know, yeah. we get worried about. It's just amazing. Oh, me too. I when know. you see the whole change and, you know, and then to think, his heart was out for 18 seconds. Wow. And he's okay. All good. I know. Yeah. Married yes. 50 years. Congratulations yeah. to them. Yep. Going to be hanging out for 51. There you go. <laughs>